From Hollywood, your radio theater. From Hollywood, California, for all of you men and women in the armed forces of the United Nations, Special Service presents your radio theater. And here is the director, Mr. Cecil B. DeMille. the curtain for drama, song, and gaiety on the first act of My Gal Sal, starring Mary Martin as Sally and Dick Powell as Paul. In the gay 90s, all America, from Florida girl, the barkeep, was singing and dancing to the catchy melodies of a small town boy from Indiana. His name was Paul Dresser, and his career was as gay and extravagant as the period he set to music. Well, perhaps not always gay, but there was a time, for example, when he was picked up on the road just outside of Jonesville, Illinois, picked up unconscious, wearing a suit of tar and feathers. Come on, Sonny. Put your arm up here. Now, let's see if we can get the rest of that tar off. Well, who, uh, what is... This may sing a little, Sonny. Are you awake? Yes, yes, I'm awake, all right. I Say, how did I get here? What town is this? No town. We're five miles from Jonesville. Seems you were run off on a rail or something, remember? Oh, yeah. And we found you in a ditch. At first, we thought you were a turkey. <laughs> Did you find me? No, it was one of the Indians. Indian? In Illinois? That's right. His name is McGuire. An Indian name of... I guess I'm not awake yet. Oh, sure you are. We're Colonel Truckee's Kickapoo Indian Extravaganza. Oh, a medicine show. Uh-huh. Kickapoo Indian Remedy. Guaranteed to cure practically anything. Hey, how's he coming along? He'll be all right, Colonel. Well, well, let's see what emerged from under that tar. Welcome, my boy. I'm Colonel Truckee. Well, you're looking much improved. What do you use to take the tar off, May? Your cough, Madison. You don't say. Perhaps we'd better sell it as a spot remover. Young man, what occasioned this tiff between you and the population of yonder Jonesville? Well, I, uh, I was working for a man who was selling gold jewelry. I played the banjo to attract crowds. Well, you obviously attracted them, but your music must have been quite horrible. It wasn't my music. The gold jewelry turned out to be brass. Brass, eh? Sounds like you were working for Corbin. I was. Hmm. Well, any town that Corbin's worked is a desert for three months afterwards. I think we'll root our little extravaganza around Jonesville. Thanks for the tip, young man. Uh, by the way, I presume you're now footloose and fancy free, eh? What? And he means you want a job. Oh, sure, sure. Provided, of course, that you can play better than I think you can. You play the piano, too. Just you wait till you hear me, that's all. Oh, good. Well, spend a few days getting on your feet and we'll talk about it. May give him a pint or two of trucky elixir. Guaranteed to bring the flush of health to cheeks pale and wan. I think some hot soup would be better. Miss Collins, are you inferring to a stranger that our products have a peer? All I'm saying is he's got to be stronger before he drinks any of your time. Miss Collins, if nature had not endowed you so lushly with charms pleasing to male spectators, I would discharge you on the spot. Hey, Colonel, Colonel, you want to taste this medicine now? We just made up a whole batch. Oh, let me see, McGuire. Yeah. Joe says it's a best yet. Uh-huh. Uh, who... <coughs> <coughs> who concocted this vile concoction? I did. Joe says you've it's a deviated from the prescription, McGuire. Put in 20 pounds more sugar and perhaps a gallon or two of peppermint. I'll fix it. That's as mature the colonel's making now. For rheumatism, we leave out the sugar. All right, boy, all right. That's enough of the Kickapoo Indian War, Dan. Now just sit down over there and count your scalp. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen of Lindford, here you have nature's own remedy of herbs and roots with which the American Indian has always cured the ills of his loved ones. Oh, Paul, the colonel's up to the Kickapoo 
remedy. You better get out there. I'm ready. Well, May, how do I look? Another new suit? Yeah, how do you like it? Not bad, huh? But you bought three new suits last month. Oh, but those others were just things to wear. This came from Chicago. I always wanted a tech suit. Hey, it's got a big city cut, all right. Yeah, I just sent my measurements and the money, and it came back like this. From now on, those gents are my tailors. Mm hmm. I like the vest, too. Yeah. Say, uh, you don't think it's too loud, do you? Green and red? Oh, no, it's fine. <laughs> well, I sort of like it myself. Say, did you catch my act last night? I watch you every night. Well, don't miss me tonight. I'm going to try out a new specialty. You'll be great. I'm glad you came with us, Paul. Awfully glad. Well, thanks. You've been thrilled to me, May. I'll bet you know why, too, don't you? Sure. You like my act. <sighs> hey, Mercy, you're almost done. Ready and waiting, McGuire. Ready and waiting. Hey, May. May, we got the carriage straight tonight. Did you get a line on those two in the buggy? No. Who are they? I don't know. Some girl in the fella. She's a looker, all right. I bet she don't come from around these parts. Who wants all quick? Yeah. Say, if this stunt goes over, I'm going to hit the colonel for a raise. You've got a fat chance of getting it. Go on. Well, if I draw it, I'll start my own show. All you need is an Indian and a couple of recipes. That's especially me. In slow Indian fashion, Chief Mahoney Papa, thank you for your kindness and attention. And now... Now, while Chief Bahani Papa and his brothers pass among you with a supply of this original Kickapoo Indian remedy, you will be entertained by Mr. Paul Dresser, who has just closed a season of brilliant piano recitals in the great city of Chicago. Mr. Dresser. Good evening, folks. Good evening. Good evening to you one and all. And now, folks, rather than anything heavy, I thought I'd play something in a lighter vein tonight. A little composition of my own is yet untitled. Oh, that With your kind attention. Come on, Sally. We'd better drive on. Oh, not yet. I want to listen a minute, Fred. To Mr. Paul Dresser, the brilliant pianist from Chicago? I don't seem to remember Mr. Dresser building Chicago when we were there, do you? Well, we never played the stockyard. Oh, Fred, that's not funny. Come on, Sally. You've got an early rehearsal tomorrow. Just a minute. You know, that's a catchy tune, Fred. Maybe we did miss him in Chicago. Not if he wore that suit. <laughs> Just the same. We could use a tune like that in the show. Gentlemen, as an encore, I will present a startling piano novelty. Ladies and gentlemen, before your very eyes, you are going to see a feat which has never before been performed by a musician. At one and the same time, I am going to play the same tune as a duet on two pianos. Oh, With your kind attention. I'm glad we stayed. I wouldn't have missed this for anything. It's awful to laugh at him, Fred. How can you help it? They ought to move their children out of the first row. He's going to fly off of that tree. <laughs> <laughs> What's so funny back there? Oh, Fred, I, I shouldn't have done that. Let me through. Get out of the way, please. Oh, Fred, he's coming back. You better drive on. Oh, don't be silly. Who started that laughing? Was it you? Yes, it was. I'm sorry, really. I didn't mean to... If you don't like my act, how about getting out of here? No, just a minute. Say, who do you think you are? Go on, get out of here. I told you I was sorry. I apologize. That doesn't fix anything. Well, I'm afraid there's nothing more I can do. I told you what you could do. Get out of here. Now listen, you... Let him alone, Fred. I offered my apology, Mr. Dresser. But if you haven't manners enough to accept it, then I'm sorry for you. Listen, you're the one who's in the wrong, not me. I was up there... As a matter of fact, I like your act. It was the funniest act I ever saw. Funny? Wasn't you think it? it was supposed to be? Well, wasn't it? Well, nobody else thought so. Nobody laughed when you started it. But those two pianos in that suit, what could you expect? Well, what's wrong with the suit? 
Well, I suppose it's all right if you can stand the noise. Here, here, this is the sort of thing I don't permit, Dresser. Get back on the stage where you belong. Now, listen, these people... Never mind, get back on the stage. Paul, come on, please. Now, if you folks will just move along, we'll get on with our show. I'm sorry. I guess I lost my temper, too. Will you do me a favor? Hmm? Will you give Mr. Dresser something for me? Fred, let me have two tickets for tomorrow night. I'd like him to be our guest. Oh, you folks in the profession, too? We're trying out Miss Elliot's new show at the Buffalo. Here you are. See that he gets the tickets, will you? Certainly. And here. Here's one of our posters. You might put it up in some likely spot. Good night. Night, folks. Good night. Hmm. Buffalo Theater. Sally Elliott in Bells of Broadway. <laughs> If I seem rather gay, little girl, they say, I made of sugar and spice. I'm the toy, the good time party, and see so Johnny for me. I'm the toast of the town, but I hope to settle down to someone, maybe you. If you're after love and laughter while you're young and free, come along with me, come along and see. we went down there to break up her act. Yeah, I know, I know. All you did during the whole show was sit and stare. Anybody would think you'd never been in a theater before. Well, that's right, May. That was my first time. Huh? May, I've got to get out of here. What for? Oh, I can't spend my whole life at a medicine show. I thought it was great stuff until tonight. Sitting up there on that red wagon playing a piano, it was wonderful. And then tonight we saw a real show. All of a sudden, it hit me how cheap it is. It's like the suit I'm wearing. Yesterday, I thought that was wonderful, too. But it is wonderful. Oh, no, it isn't. It's a hick suit. It's loud and cheap, just like the show. Oh, I've got a lot to learn, May. And I'll never learn it in these tank towns. I'm going to New York. I'll go with you, Paul. No, I, I, I'd better go by myself. Paul, you can't just walk out on me. You've been awfully good to me, May. You got me a job when I needed it. You helped me grow up. But I, I got to go on alone now. I know what it is. It's that girl. No, it isn't. But nobody's going to laugh at me. Not her or anybody. Someday I'll write a song and she'll come begging to sing it. Then I'll do a little laughing myself. Excuse me. Can you tell me where Broadway is? Broadway and what, mister? Oh, I don't know. I, I'm a stranger in New York. Did you have to tell me? It's over that way. Thanks. Hey, wait. What's that junior with me? What's it to you? Go on, whistle it again. Look, I sell newspapers. I'm a businessman. I ain't got time to entertain farmers. Go on, whistle now. Here. Here, I'll give you a dime. All right. So now I'm a professional. Go on, whistle it. Yes. Well, that's it. That's my song. Where did you hear it? How should I know? Lots of guys are whistling it. But how can they? I wrote it. It's mine. Hooray. Why don't you get down to Tin Pan Alley and get paid? Where is Tin Pan Alley? 28th Street. Well, tell them I sent you. My name's Beethoven. I tell you, it's my song. I wrote it. Look, I didn't publish the song. I only wish I did. I don't own the rights. I've got the rights. I wrote it. Somebody stole it from me. I know. Every time there's a hit tune, 50 guys claim they wrote it. This song was written by Sally Elliott. It's the best tune in her new show. Sally Elliott? Well, that proves it. She heard me play it. Well, you get out of here or will I call a cop? 
Sally Elliott doesn't go around stealing songs. She's too big a star for that. Oh, she is, is she? Well, here, take a look at this. Can you read music? Can I read music? Well, can you? No. Well, get somebody who can. This is the song the way I wrote it, the same as they're doing it now. Sally Elliott heard me play it when she was in Buffalo with a show. Come to think about it, that tune wasn't in the original score. They added it when they brought the show into New York. Say, maybe you got something. Hey, Harry, come in here, Harry. Yeah, what? Harry, what would you say if I said to you that Sally Elliott didn't write Come Tell Me and that this guy did? I'd say we'd all better go out and get drunk after we sign him up. Come on, hurry up. Wait a minute, Mr. Howley. Hey, uh, where's Miss Elliott's dressing room? Third door. Thanks. Now, just a minute. I want to make one thing clear. The music is mine, but I didn't write those words they're using. Now, look, don't start the weekend. You're going to tell her it's yours, just like you said. Sure I am. That's the boy. Come in. Evening, Miss Elliott. My name's Howley. Howley and Collins, music publisher. How do you do? Now, this is Paul. Of course. This is Mr. Dresser, isn't it? Yes, Mr. Dresser. Well, I'm certainly glad to see you. Yes, I'll bet you are. People are usually glad to see the people they steal songs from. No, 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 no. I didn't steal your song, Mr. Dresser. Well, I didn't give it to you, did I? Uh, now, let me handle this. The whole thing will be worked out. I doubt that very much. Get out, please. Oh, no, no. This is my dressing room. Get out. Uh, keep calm, Miss Elliot. Do you expect me to be calm when he walks in here and calls me a thief? I did not call you a thief. But you are. Get out. Get out. Now, wait, wait. Let's all talk this thing over like gentlemen. I've had all of this, gentlemen, that I can stand. What's the matter in here? Fred, will you tell this, this carnival tout that I didn't steal his song? Now, look here, Havlin. If she's going to take that attitude, we'll sue. I don't think that'll be necessary. Mr. Dresser? You and Miss Elliot have a great talent for irritating each other. Suppose you approach her now without breathing fire. If she'll just quit stealing my songs, I won't approach her at all. That's where you're wrong. The song isn't stolen. We admit it's yours. You admit it? Yes, but... we admit. We've never published a song. We've been looking all over for you, trying to get your permission. Right now, we don't want it. Oh, yes, we do, dear. Well, you'd have to talk to me about that, Havlin. I have exclusive rights to Mr. Dresser's work. But not to Miss Elliot. She wrote the words. She can have her words back. I'm going to write my own words. Oh, you are. Ha. What do you mean, ha? Ha! You're on it two minutes, Miss Elliot. Fred, the song is out of the show. As of tonight. No, Sally. It's out. Wait, wait. The song is a good song. It's a hit. It's going over because of the music. <laughs> well, it is. Sure, the music is great. But you're unknown, and it means a lot to an unknown to have a big star like Sally Elliott introduce a song. Later on, you can do things the way you want, right? Well, I guess so, yeah. Once I get started, I won't need her or anybody. Fred, listen. It's all settled, Sally. You own the words, Dresser owns the music. Is that the idea, Mr. Howley? It's a deal. Good. Sally, meet your new partner, Paul Dresser. Mr. Howley, go on. Go on, Mr. Howley. My partner. All right. Tell him to go back home, Fred. We'll send his royalties to the Kickapoo Indian Show. <laughs> I think it's just an idle fancy For all the world a lot of love, you know It's true mankind is fickle, still I love you Come tell me what you're after, yes or no By the stars that brightly shine tonight, Lord I swear that I love you by yonder moon that sheds its mellow light, no, I promise I'll be true. By the memory of a sacred past, no, in sunshine, rain, or winter's icy blast, no, I'm ending my devotion to the last, no, what more can I say to you? When I placed my arms around your sweet heart, when I held to you my tale of love, of the future which no one before us, far brighter than the skies above. Do nothing to just the light of fancy, 
young man in flashy clothes who sleeps late and drinks early and is never on time for appointments. He's late for an appointment now at a surprise party that Fred is giving for Sally Elliott. Thank you. I... Fred, what is this? It isn't my birthday, is it? Oh, I hope not. You may not know it, Sally, but this is a great occasion. You see that cake? One candle in it. Well, one year ago tonight, I became your producer. Also your devoted slave. Oh, Fred, you're a darling. Everyone's a darling. Shall I cut the cake? Well, wait if you can. We're not all here yet. Who else is coming? Sally, hold on to your temper. I invited Paul Dresser. Oh. How nice. Now, after all, the two of you wrote the biggest hit in New York. No reason why you should go around glaring at each other. Oh, I have no objection. It's just that I despise him. Sally, we need good music, and he can write it. Of course, he may not have time to drop in on us. 
I hear he's personally closing every bar and cabaret in New York. <laughs> yes, the heat of the limelight has made him a little thirsty. But he's young and still growing. Yes. His head, especially. Sally, the way I feel tonight, I can forgive anybody anything. Oh, Fred. And by the way, that candle isn't just to celebrate our first year together. It's a sort of a pale imitation of the bonfire in my heart. Now, that's the second pretty speech from you in one minute. Wait till you hear the third. If you give the right answer, it'll call for a much bigger cake. Well, you know how much I like cake. <laughs> Hello, everybody. Hello. Hello. Oh, Mr. Dresser has arrived. I suppose we can begin now. How are you, Fred? Sorry to be late. I was playing the piano with Tony Pastor. They wouldn't let me break away. That's all right. Hello, Miss Elliot. Say, I'd like you folks to be a good friend of mine. Miss Elliot, this is Mr. Sullivan. John L. Sullivan. Hello, John. Hello, Sally Miller. Oh, you know each other? Very well. The only time I was ever knocked out of my life was the first time I heard Sally sing. Well, Paul, me bucko, let's sit down and get to drinking. Sure, John, sure. Fred, it was nice of you to ask me here tonight. Say, what's the cake for? Somebody's birthday? Oh, I guess not, with only one candle. I... Oh, I get it. Say, this is nice. What is nice? Hey, John L., look at that cake. That's <laughs> celebrating my first song hit. Hmm, come tell me. That's a great song. World champion songwriter, this boy. World champion. Oh, he's a great booster of mine, old John L. He thinks I'm pretty good. Well, so do you, don't you? What? After all, you're a big success, aren't you? Why, you've taken New York by storm. Oh, New York isn't so difficult for a fellow who can play the piano and doesn't mind buying a few drinks. And just think, you've done it all on one song. No telling where you'll go if you ever write another song. So it's already written. I wrote it the other night in a bar down on Front Street. I'll play it for you. Where are you going, bucko? I'll play my new song. You are? Quiet, everybody. No talking. Dresser's written another hit. Going to play it for us. Quiet there. Quiet. Oh, Miss Elliot, I, uh, I wrote the words to this one myself. Got a copy here. Look them over and sing along with me, will you? Mm. Thank you. Not at all. Here you are, as I dreamed that you would be. How near you are, just a kiss away from me. Although I know that we're on earth below, I feel we're somewhere on a star. You like it? Here you are, and I.
Fine song, Bucko. Fine. All right, folks, you can talk now. Well, Miss Elliot? It, uh, it's a very lovely song. I do like it. You know something? When I hear you sing, I can't remember I was ever mad at you. <laughs> I feel a little bit that way about you when I hear your music. In that case, I suggest we be friends from now on. All right. A truth. Well, that isn't what I meant, but we can talk it over on the way home. <laughs> no, I came here with Fred. I'll be going home with him, too. You're going home with me. I don't think so. When you're ready, just let me know. Well, thanks for bringing me home, Mr. Dresser. That's all right. Too bad Fred was called away from the party. He might have saved you the trouble. No trouble. Anyway, that message he got was a fake. I sent it. Oh. <laughs> Good night. I'll see you in. Oh, that's not be necessary. Oh, this is a nice hotel. I'd like to see the inside. If you're referring to the inside of my suite, I'll give a party sometime and have you over. Oh, don't go to all that fuss. I can see it now. I'm sorry. Good night. Not yet. Driver, through the park. Yes, sir. You take a lot of liberties, Mr. Dresser. I know it. I'm going to take one now. Oh, no. Oh, yes. It'll be one too many, I warn you. We'll cancel all the others. This is the only important one. Sally. No, listen, stop. Do you... Well, do I get slapped? I, uh... I haven't decided. You haven't the strength. You know, Sally, they tell me that a lot of people start out hating each other and end up this way. Do they, Paul? Eliza Jane. This is for Here You Are. And, and your guest of honor still isn't here. Oh, he'll be along. Uh, Pat, did you send someone to Paul? He wasn't there. Well, I, I guess he was held up someplace. I know where he is. So do both of you. Why do we fool ourselves? Since society took him up, he ain't got any time for common play like us. Oh, anyone is successful as Paul is bound to be lionized. And Paul likes fun. What about you, Sally? Don't you like fun? You know, it's a queer thing about geniuses. You always hear of them burning their genius away in an attic. But you see them burning in the brightest places in town. Paul's been working very hard. Why, well, he has a wonderful new melody, and, and he's writing the words. It's an idea about his home on the banks of the Wabash. A farm song. Who cares about farms? Who ever heard of the Wabash? Hey, hey, if the tune's any good, we could change it to the Hudson. Well, the guest of honor is here, and I think we're going to need some more chairs. Sorry to be late, Sal. Oh, uh, Mariana, I'd like you to know Mr. Elliot. Sally, this is the Countess Rossini. Oh, how do you do, Miss Elliot? I have enjoyed your performances so very much. Yes. I've heard a great deal about yours, too, Captain. I'm not quite sure what you mean. I am not a professional. Oh, aren't you? Uh, uh, well, uh... Now, look, suppose uh, suppose we just get a cup of chairs here. We'll move the cake to a bigger table. Oh, don't bother. I was just leaving. Now, oh, Sally, don't. I know you've been waiting, and you I'm sorry. You've had your last cake for me. The next one you'll get in the face. Now, Sally. And as for the candles, you can burn them at your wake. Good night. Pleasure to make clothes for someone with a figure like yours, Mr. Dresser. Looks rather good, I think. Uh, come in. Hello. Well, Sally, this is a surprise. Are you busy? No, oh, no, just trying on a few new suits. I threw away everything I had and turned Jansen here loose. Are those the new ones over there? That's right. Well, I suppose you do get a better price when you order them by the dozen. I believe that takes care of everything, Mr. Dresser. I'll take the other one to the shop and get it back here in plenty of time for you to pack. 
Thanks, gentlemen. I hope you have a very pleasant voyage, Mr. Vesta. Goodbye, madame. I didn't know you were going away. Well, uh, well, I'd have told you if we'd been speaking. How long will you be gone? Oh, just a little while. I thought I'd run down to Cuba. That would be nice. Well, what about the song, Paul? The Wabash song? We were going to put it in the show, remember? Oh, Sally, I can't work around here anymore. I need a change. On the boat, there won't be anything to do, and we'll all have plenty of time just to work. Oh, uh, look, Sal, will you excuse me while I jump in the tub? Well, I think I'd better run along. Now, don't go. I won't be able to manage. See who that is, will you, Sal? Who is it? Well, Monsieur Dresser, may I see him, please? He's busy right now. Oh, but I have a message for him from the Comtesse Rossini. Oh. I'll give it to him. Oh, no, I regret. It is confidential. Well, I'm his confidential secretary. He keeps nothing from me. Well, the message is this. The Comtesse will meet Monsieur Dresser on the boat, not at her home. Oh, she will, will she? Yes. You will be sure you will not forget. Never. Not if I live to be 90. Go to Cuba, will he? Go to Cuba with the Countess in 12 suits. Wear the scissors. I'll fix his 12 new suits. I'll fix them for him. If he wears these pants on the boat, they'll arrest him. 11 new suits. 10 new suits. I'll show him. Where is she? Why, Mr. Dresser, she done gone out. Good. Where does she keep her clothes? Why, Mr. Dresser. In here, huh? Good. I'll show her. Mr. Dresser, what you doing? I'll show her. She can't cut my pants off at the knees. Why, Mr. Dresser. I tell you, you have no right to hold me. Silence! But I didn't do any more to her than she did to me. Did you hear me? What about this, Miss Elliot? Your Honor, do you think I'd go into a man's apartment and cut his clothes to pieces? Why, of course I don't, Miss Elliot. Oh, my. Let's have it quiet! Miss Elliot, I'm going to find him guilty of willful destruction of property. What do you think the sentence ought to be? Well, I don't think he should be hanged. <laughs> I'll hang him if you say the word. Miss Elliot. Well? I just can't think of anything now. Should I let you know later? Well, of course. Of course. I'll hold him till you make up your mind. I suppose it's useless to remind you that I have certain rights. Young man, that attitude will get you nowhere. First thing you ought to do is apologize. All right. I will. Miss Elliot. Dear Miss Elliot, my boat is almost ready to sail. Will it do any good to say that I hate myself? Yes. Just for that, I'll knock one day off of your sentence. No. Give him six weeks, Jackie. Oh. And that was the act two curtain of your radio theater. We'll get on with the third act in just a moment. Right now, Harry James and his music makers take over, and with lovely Helen Forrest vocalizing, they're all set to go. Here they are. Oh, 
just you, Sally. I'd like to believe that. I wish I could. You can't. I want you to marry me, Sally. Marry you? Well? When, Paul? When the snow closes? No, Saturday night. Then, then we'll have all day Sunday for a honeymoon. Oh, a whole day. Oh, what more could a girl ask? Whether you know it or not, 
You've needed her from the time you wrote your first song. Suppose you leave my personal life to me. I would if it wasn't interfering with my business. You were a valuable property once, but you haven't been worth a hoot since she left. No, listen, it, well, it's just a temporary slump, that's all. I, I've been working, Pat. I've been working hard. Look, you see this stuff? I've got ten songs, Joe. I'll have it up for a whole show. You mean a show with ten flops in it? What's this one over here? No, not that one. That's one. Well, I... What is it? Oh, forget that one. Wait a minute. I sort of like this title, Paul. My Gal Sal. I said to forget that one. It's no good. I came all the way out here just to see you, Sally. I've got some pretty good numbers. A fellow by the name of Hastings wrote them. Now, look. Oh, Pat, uh, I don't feel like hearing songs tonight. And neither do I. It's strictly business. Here, look them over, will Pat. you? Sally isn't interested right now. My gal, Sal. How's that for a title? Pretty good, huh? My gal, Sal. <laughs> yeah, it's great for you, Sally. The words fit you like a glove. You've just got to hear this one. You're pretty anxious. You must have written it yourself. Me? I hate music. <laughs> but I got it hot from the composer's quill. Who did write it? Oh, a southern composer. They're from the south. A fellow named Fletcher. I thought you said Hastings. Yeah, sure. Fletcher Hastings or Hastings Fletcher. Something like that. He's a friend of Harry. Fred, listen. They call her frivolous Sal, a peculiar sort of a gal, with a heart that was mellow and all round good fellow. It was my gal Sal. You see? You see what I mean? Fred, this might be something for the show at that. Sure, sure. It's great, Sal. Think of it. My gal Sal, sung by Sally Ellis. And I'm feeling bad. I lost the best house that I ever had. Is that a fortnight when she was here? Seems like she's gone though for something. Oh, how I miss her, my old pal. Oh, how I kiss her, my gal pal. She's not so handsome, but I don't know that strong, just and bright as they did long ago. They call her. Getting the number for me? Say, that reminds me. The author's in town. That means he's in your dressing room. Yes, he was too nervous to come out. I'll go in and see him. His name is, uh, Mr. Hastings, isn't it? No, no, I had it all wrong. It's Fitch. Uh, was it Monstromley? I want him to speak to him. <laughs> all right. Hello, are you Miss? Hello, Sal. What does this mean? What are you doing in San Francisco? Pat told me you were going to sing my number. Your number? I couldn't stay away. You did it beautifully, Sally. So you wrote it. If I'd known that, I wouldn't have sung a note of it. It would have stuck in my tonsils. Why? 
Why did you beg for the number if you didn't want it? Beg for it? They told me some long story about somebody writing it in the middle of a cotton field. Oh, that was Pat playing Cupid. You get out of here. And and take that, that cake with you. Oh, the cake. Oh, uh, that, that's for you. I brought it all the way to New York. It's a little stale, but the sentiment's still fresh. So are you. Get out. Oh, no, no. Get out or I'll break this cake right over your head. You just try it. Hey, hey! <laughs> I warned you. Oh, come here. Let me go. I didn't come 3,000 miles just to get cake in my face. There's only one language you understand, and I speak it. If you kiss me, I'll... Oh, I'll... no, you won't. You won't have the strength. <laughs> there. See? <laughs> oh. Oh. Oh, Sally. Frivolous pal. <laughs> A very peculiar sort of gal. With a heart that was mellow. And all round good fellow. Was my gal pal. Your trouble, sorrow, and care. He was always ready to share. Thank you.